What is going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is AJ Good, welcome to the House of Masks, and let's get right on into this video. Now for those of you that don't know, I have set out to create a video series that catalogs every single Slipknot mask worn by every single Slipknot member. The first video that we did in this series featured Mr. Sid Wilson, aka Zero, aka The Filth Epitome, aka Rat Boy, aka DJ Starscream, aka Too Many Monikers to Count. We went through every single mask that he wore in his Slipknot career aside from oddballs which will get their own video at the end of this series. Which means that in today's video we are doing none other than Joey Jordison. We will be starting with his first mask and go all the way through the final mask that he wore while he was with Slipknot. Once again this video will not include oddball masks and I guess oddball masks are up to everybody's own interpretation so I just won't be counting the oddballs that I find to be oddballs. Hope that makes sense. Now before we jump on into the list I am going to go ahead and credit SlipknotHistory.com once again. I will be loosely basing this video off of their list and just adding some little tidbits of my own, just trying to pepper it in there. See what you want to just put a little pepper on the end of it. You just want to put a little pepper on the end of it. Like a yes! Uh... If you guys would like to take a look at that site for yourself, I am going to be dropping their link down below. It's a super, super cool site. It's pretty much the site that people like us have needed for a very long time. Cataloging and archiving every single Slipknot mask known to man. Jumpsuits, face paints, you name it, it's on there. Super, super dope. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into the masks, starting with Mate Feed Kill Repeat. Yeah, we're going to start with Mate Feed Kill Repeat. I didn't technically count any of Sid's masks from the Mate Feed Kill Repeat era because I don't think that it was Mate Feed Kill Repeat. I think it was more along the lines of the self-titled era. So take that for what you will. I didn't want to start Sid in the MFKR era because I didn't quite feel like he was in the MFKR era. I feel like there was a very weird time period between MFKR and self-titled, and I feel like Sid Wilson's run started with the self titled era, so it's my video, fuck you. Anyways, Joey Jordison, MFKR. Alright guys, so the first Joey mask, surprise surprise, is going to be the regular 83 Caesar mask, just completely blank. There's an old internet rumor that includes Joey and his mom and this mask, and based on that rumor, we have to think that this was the first mask that he ever used or thought about using with Slipknot. This brings us to our next mask, which is the same exact mask, but there is a Sinclair gas station sticker slapped over the mouth. Sinclair stuff was pretty readily available to Joey due to the fact that he actually worked at a Sinclair gas station, and there is a clip of Joey talking about what he wanted to do in and with Slipknot in a Sinclair gas station. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint my whole fucking body in red with my mask on, I'm gonna wear a dress, and wear no fucking underwear. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna take the dress off, I'm gonna have some weird ass thing covering my coxton. I'm gonna write unpunk on my fucking chest and write 666 on my fucking stomach. This would also explain the Sinclair decal that is across Craig's early MFKR helmet. This mask was never seen live, only in promo shots. The next mask on the list is going to be a female 83 Caesar. Yes, Joey Jordison wore the female version our mask and not a lot of people catch this. And I believe that that is it for Joey's MFKR masks. But AJ, Joey wore a BCD. But AJ, Joey wore a devil hat. You guys know what the deal is. We never saw Joey perform with the BCD. It's only in one photo. I'm counting this one as an oddball. And no, headgear doesn't count, so I won't be adding it to the list. It doesn't technically alter the mask. It's just an addition to Joey's outfit. So I will not be adding the devil hat to the list. Well, flip flaps and flavias, ladies and gentlemen, we're already through the first MF and album cycle. And now is where stuff starts to get real good. There are so many mask variations between these next two albums. So I don't know about you, but I'm ready. Joey Jordison's self titled masks. All right, starting off fresh, we once again have the 83 Caesar blank. He probably had a shitload of these masks because I know that he definitely gave away at least one of the MFKR blank male masks. So we're starting off fresh with a new one, which leads us right into our second mask of the self-titled era, and that is going to be the extended forehead blank 83 Caesar. This is literally just a regular blank 83 Caesar with another blank 83 Caesar forehead cut and glued to the forehead 
forehead of the inside of the mask. Joey had a pretty large forehead and I assume that he did this just so he wouldn't have to put makeup on his forehead. There's really no explanation for this mask, that's just my best guess, but it's definitely an interesting feature. Now we're to the point where Joey has started to alter his masks with different face paints, eyeliners, lipsticks, and nail polishes. This first variation is very heavily believed to have been done with eyeliner. The texture and sheen and the way that it wore down and weathered up over time leads us to believe that this was definitely eyeliner, and pretty much anyone doing a replica of this variation will use eyeliner because it gives the same exact effect. The next mask on the list is actually the same mask, it's just got some new additions made. Once again, we believe that this is all done with eyeliner. You can see that the eye shapes and eyebrow scars have changed quite a bit, and there is now an added chin strap, if you will, just dots along the chin there, which leads us to our next chin strap mask. Once again, it is the same mask, but there is a slight change with the eyebrow scars. We now have dots under the eyebrow lines. The chin strap has been made more prominent, and we're starting to see some dots appear around the mouth. Moving right along, we have the same mask with a lot of wear and tear. Clearly, almost all of the eyeliner has been washed or weathered off of the mask. We don't really see much around the chin, only on the jawline. A lot of the eyebrow scars have disappeared, and I can't quite tell, but it doesn't appear that there is much of the design on the mouth remaining. Next up, we have a different mask, a slightly different design going on here, but the eyebrow designs seem to be far different than before. As you can see, we have some horizontal lines going on, and there has been a dot added to the lip. Now we are working our way into what we refer to as the worm mask. <laughs> I'll explain a little bit later when you can see what I'm talking about a little bit better, but this is the first variation we have of the worm mask. Make sure to pay close attention to the detail on the eyes and around the eyebrow scars. This variation seems to have some sort of red lipstick around the lips, and as you can see there are some faded lines around the mouth. Next up, we once again have the worm mask. As you can see, there are some designs around the mouth. These could have been what faded off from the picture prior. There's really no way to put some of these in chronological order because we just don't have the resources to do so. The footage and images that we're going off of for some of these is so awful that we just have to take our best guesses here. And I want to point something out here. The reason that we call this the worm mask is because no matter what design the mask had, as it went through tons and tons of changes, it always had this little worm-like line coming out of the right eye. The true right eye. It's the left side of the photo, but the true right eye of the mask always had this little guy, which we refer to as the worm. Moving on, again we have the worm mask. As you can see, the mouth design has has been changed quite a bit from the last one. We're starting to get kind of a pre-stitch mouth design going on here, leading us to yet another variation. The mouth has changed yet again, but still staying with the stitch mouth looking design. Once again, we have the worm mask here, and as you can see, all of the design on the mouth has been rubbed off. There's barely just a faint ghost-like image of what used to be, and you can still see that worm sticking out of the eye there. Worm mask again, slightly different mouth, and again, and again, and here is what we have to be considered the first stitch mouth mask. Now everybody knows the dynamo mask as the stitch mouth mask and that is true. It is the most prominent, it's the most well known, but this is actually the first variation of the stitch mouth that we saw. Personally, I like this version better. I think it's far cooler. I just like the design on the mouth a little bit more, but everybody's got love for the dynamo. Notice that you can still prominently see the worm sticking out of the left or true right eye. Here we have the same mask with some slight fading going on on the mouth. Moving on to this variation, which is once again the worm with some really, really really heavy weathering going on. It looks like he was almost getting ready to rework it. And this will be the last time that we see the worm mask in the self-titled set. But don't worry because it definitely comes back during Iowa and I think that you guys are going to be surprised and really, really enjoy that. Moving on, we now have the Stitch Mouth mask, the true Stitch Mouth, the one that everybody refers to as the Stitch Mouth. Definitely one of Joey's more iconic masks, very much well known. And here we have a slight variation of the Stitch Mouth mask, one that I have yet to stick into my collection actually. As you can see, it appears as though Joey has put an X on the forehead, which did not stick around very long. This is actually the only photo that we know of that has that X. Next up, we have what we refer to as the pre-Kerrang Awards Joey Jordison mask. This is what Joey later used as the Wait and Bleed Animated or Kerrang or Gods of Metal Joey with the red added, but here we have it in a really weird state. Not a lot of photos of this thing. As you can see, it looks very wavy. There appears to be a line going up the cheek from the mouth. And in the next photo, you'll see that the mask 
mask has progressed just a little bit. We have some harsher lines going on around the eyes. The mouth has been cleaned up quite a bit and you can see what appears to be lines going vertically from the lips, leading us right into the Wait and Bleed or Kerrang Awards variant. Hands down my all-time favorite Slipknot mask, not only because it was used during Tattoo the Earth, which is my favorite time period of all for Slipknot, but also because it was used during Iowa, which you guys will see shortly, and also, also just because of its looks. This is hands down my favorite looking Joey Jordison mask of all time. There's just something really, really killer about it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these are not listed in any sort of chronological order. We're just doing the best that we can here, and this was actually a variant that popped up in later days. Here we have the Wait and Bleed variant, and this is an earlier mask, but clearer and clearer still shots have come out from the Wait and Bleed video, and we can actually see that Joey had lines on the mouth of the mask. It just kind of looks like a loose lip outline here, and there is one other photo of this that exists, but you can still barely see the mouth. So this is just what we're going off of from the Wait and Bleed video. Man, there's just something about Joey Jordison's self-titled masks that works. And with that being said, we're all the way through Joey Jordison's self-titled masks and on to Iowa. So let's hop on into almost everyone's favorite album cycle and view Joey Jordison's Iowa masks. All right, let's get it cracking right off the bat. We have one of Joey's most well-known, most iconic Iowa masks. I would place this one right up at the tip-top tied with the bloody Iowa. We have the Left Behind 83 Cesar. And just so everyone's aware, all of the masks from Self-Titled Through Iowa were done on 83 Cesars. Even the masks during MFKR were done on 83 Cesars. The only difference is that one of those was done on a female variant. Anyways, back to the mask at hand, that is the Left Behind version, and this is one of my all-time favorites, probably just due to nostalgia's sake. Seeing this on the Rolling Stone cover, I always loved this mask, and I actually had a really poorly done replica of this mask that I took to OzFest and had some of the members sign. Moving on, we have the weathered variant of the Left Behind version, and as you can see, it's the same exact mask. There just appears to be a lot of hair dye and face paint splashed upon the mask. As Joey would wear this and headbang, he would get hair dye and face paint on the mask, and it just gave it a very worn out look. Moving on to what I would consider to be the other most iconic mask from the Iowa era, we have the Bloody Iowa Joey, and this was far different from anything that we had seen done by Joey so far. Aside from the Sinclair sticker in the MFKR days, I think this design is the most different out of all of Joey's masks. Everything prior seemed to have some sort of tribal-esque look to it. They weren't really gimmicky, they were just their own thing, and then Joey comes along with a straight up blood version. This was definitely not one of my favorites as a kid, but as I started reproducing replicas of this version, it quickly grew on me, and now I can say that it's definitely one of my favorites. Here we have the same mask, just heavily weathered. As you can see, some of the paint has chipped off, and the mask itself has a nice tinge to it. Just a heavy layer of face paints and makeup and dirt built up on this mask. Making its way back onto our list, we have here a self-titled mask that Joey actually did wear a few times for Iowa, and as you can see, there are some slight changes here. The nail polish that Joey painted this with is definitely starting to chip off heavily in the eyebrow area, around the eyes, and around the lips. I think generally the mask was dirtier as well, but you can't quite tell from this photo. But nonetheless, he did reuse this mask during Iowa, so I am adding it to the Iowa list. Now we are back to our old friend, the Worm Eye. Remember the worm mask from the self-titled list? Well, here she is again. As you can see, we've got that worm sticking out, and it looks like Joey has completely reworked the mouth area, giving us that very prominent, very well-known Iowa mouth shape, which would continue into Volume 3. Here we have the worm eye once again, and it looks like Joey Jordison has started playing around with some different colors on the mask. Once again, continuing with the colored theme, we see some different colors laid over the black that is on the mask typically. Here we have a hot topic amongst Slipknot collectors. Some believe that this is a replica that was made for Joey, maybe by Screaming Mad George painted to look like the worm eye mask. I personally believe that it is the worm eye mask. You can still barely see the remnants of a worm eye there. It almost looks like the mask has been completely repainted and given a design similar to the Disaster Pieces style Joey, which you guys will see next. And as you can see, some of the scars on the cheeks have completely worn off, which brings me to the next mask, which I believe is this mask. Too many of the details match up, and you can still see the prominent worm sticking out of the true right side eye there. As you can see, the mask is heavily discolored, but we actually do know the owner of the real mask, and it looks a lot closer to this state than it did the prior photo. Here we have another weird variant. This one is clearly just a female version 
version of an 83 Cesar done on a male 83 Cesar. We call this the makeup variant because the makeup on the mask is very reminiscent of a drag queen. As you can see, we've got some lipstick design going on there with heavy lip liner, definitely giving it that tranny look. And a lot of the makeups that Joey did when he was with the murder dolls looked very similar to this mask. Now, aside from this photo, we only have one image that shows Joey wearing this mask. It was actually filmed during an interview. You can see Joey leaving the stage with this mask on. It took us a very, very long time to track down proof of Joey actually wearing this mask. Moving on to another mask with multiple variants. Here we have the silver redding slash leads version, and this was tricky for a long time because no one really knew if it was the lighting making the mask look silver, if Joey had redone the mask into gold later, or if this was just a white version with heavy lighting making the mask look shiny. After better and better footage came out, we did discover that this mask actually was silver for a short time. That leads us into the gold redding slash leads variant, and this is the same exact mask, but Joey had actually gone over the entire thing with gold sharpie. The shit that you can get accomplished when you're bored on a tour bus, right? Here we have yet another tricky mask. As you can see, it's got a very, very strange design on it, but it is something very similar to the worm eye mask. However, we have discovered that this mask was not the worm eye. Just something done very similarly, not worn very often, and definitely a unique and weird look. Here we have another not so common mask. This mask was actually only worn for this show. It is another 83 Cesar with some very similar to volume three looking tribal marks. This mask was a lot messier and a lot stranger than his other Iowa masks. And I believe that this was just based on something similar to the worm eye mask during Iowa. And he did carry the same general idea over into volume three. And thus concludes the Iowa cycle, bringing us to the halfway point of this list. Only two album cycles left to go, starting with Volume 3. Starting off Volume 3 with a bright white brand new version of Joey Jordison's Volume 3 mask, we have here the bright white brand new version of Joey Jordison's Volume 3 mask. As you can see, this is about as basic and clean as it gets, which brings us into the second variant, which is a nice bright white version that seems to have some red done around all of the black engravings. I was talking to a couple of my buddies about this mask prior to making this video, and we have decided that someone did a red wash over the black. You can see some of the red paint on the black so it wasn't just outlined. It looks like someone took a thin layer of red and did all of the black areas and then got the excess around on the outline. Next up we have the gray variant of Joey's mask. Obviously this mask has a gray base with black scars but most notably this mask has attached silver balls that were actually separate from the mask. These little silver BBs if you will were the only ones that weren't yet painted on this mask. This is the first version of the mask to feature those balls un painted. This sounds really sexual out of context. Moving along, we have yet another gray version. This one seems to be a lot shinier, whereas the other version was very matte. Even the black scars on the prior version seemed very washed out, where this one is highly contrasted. Next up, we have yet another gray-based version. This one appears to have the same thing done as the white version from a few variants ago. As you can see, there is a red wash over all of the black. It stands out on some of the higher areas of the mask, and then around all of the scars, you can clearly see a visible red outline. Here we have a version that I only remember seeing worn once at an OzFest meeting. This is a weird off-white version, almost like a yellowed white. There is no red outline on this mask. The little eyebrow balls on this mask do appear to still be metallic, but they almost look like a bronze or a copper. And this is definitely one of the stranger variations of this mask. And last but not least on this list is Joey's Volume 3 Death Mask. Definitely my favorite out of all of the death masks, and I think it's due to the face paint that Joey did underneath the mask. As you can see here, it was a little less random and a little more organized and came across almost as if one of his Iowa or self-titled paint jobs. There's just something extra creepy about Joey's death mask in particular that sets it apart from the other death masks. Death masks are already a pretty creepy idea, but something about Joey's just sets it off for me. All right guys, last album cycle. All Hope Is Gone is up next. It's my least favorite version of Joey Jordison's mask. All 
All right, ladies and genitalia, boils and ghouls, we have the All Hope is Gone era, and we are starting with the All Hope is Gone promo purgatory masks. These big, stupid potatoes of paper mache. Not much to say about them. Glad that they were burned. Now we have Joey Jordison's All Hope is Gone debut mask. This would serve as the template for his new style of masks. Clearly, we are moving further and further away from the original 83 Caesar style mask. Now we have sculpted in details, even more so than the scar of volume three. We actually have staples and cracks and all sorts of things going on in this mask. And this is the first of Joey Jordison's masks to have an open mouth. I gotta say, I remember my disappointment when I saw this mask. I know that it was different and new and innovative, but I really think that he could have ridden out the self-titled and Iowa style masks just by adding different paint jobs and different markings. He could have done that for a very, very long time, but clearly he wanted a change. I'm just a less is more type of guy, I guess. And I find the simplicity of those original designs designs to be far cooler than all of this added sculpted in mess, but that's just me, who gives a shit? Next up, we have the bloody version of the All Hope is Gone mask, and this one's pretty self-explanatory. It is basically the same mask as the last one, except this has some blood added to it. Next up, we have the bloody variant, but this one is far more weathered. Most of the streaks of blood from the last version that you saw have weathered away. They've pretty much dissipated into nothing. You can still faintly see them, but for the most part, we're just left with this speckly blood splash bladder pattern. And that leads us into another version of his bloody mask. This is what we refer to as the Promark version. It is the same as the last mask, but they have done some blood touch-ups. Now we have even more of a streaky blood design coming from the eyes and mouth, and the blood only got heavier and heavier throughout the photo shoot. Next up, we have the webbed or cracked version. It definitely does give the weird appearance of like a spider web or something. I really enjoy it. I think out of all of his All Hope is Gone's, this is definitely the coolest and definitely my favorite variant. Next up, we We've got the slime version. This was used in Brazil in 2012. I don't think much explaining needs done on this one. Next up, we have a webbed recast with painted details. Not all of the cracks here are in the sculpt. It's definitely a fresher cast with a nice glossy paint job over, and definitely one of the cleaner and more detailed paint jobs of any of the All Hope is Gone masks. Sadly or not, depending on who you ask, this would be the last mask that Joey Jordison would wear during his time with Slipknot. All right, y'all, we have done it. Every single Joey Jordison mask from first to last, aside from oddballs. And you know, I was really curious on if Joey was going to have more masks than Sid, but he actually did not. In terms of variations, we only covered 60 on this list, whereas Sid's variants were in the 70s. So that's just an interesting little tidbit of information there. And with all this out of the way, I want to go ahead and show off some really, really cool charts that my buddy Tom made. These are also featured on the Slipknot History sites, and these were a lot of fun to help out with and I really really enjoyed watching them come to life. As you guys can see these charts here show Joey's masks and their lifetimes. Clearly as I mentioned earlier especially in the self-titled in Iowa days Joey had numerous masks that went through multiple changes. Some of them went through one or two, others went through upwards of a dozen. It's really interesting to see how these masks changed over time and it's also really cool to see how many different versions were used through these albums. Now these are about as close to chronological order as you're gonna get so a huge thanks to Tom Tom, and a huge thanks to Nico for having the website and giving me a slight break when it comes to making these videos. Now with all of this being said, I'm going to end the video with one question and one question alone. What is your all-time favorite Joey Jordison mask? Let me know down in the comments. As I mentioned earlier, my all-time favorite is going to be the Joey Jordison Kerrang Awards 2000. Something about that mask I just really, really love. So make sure to let me know down below what your favorite Joey Jordison mask of all time is and that is going to do it for this video. So, again, I hope that you guys have enjoyed. Thank you very, very much for watching. If you like this type of thing, make sure to subscribe. I will be doing one for every single member of Slipknot. Till next time, this has been AJ Good at the House of Masks telling you to say no to drugs and alcohol, and we will see you guys later.